In case you are developing an application for your customers, chances are you would want to create a sign up or registration page. This page can be used by these customers to create their own accounts, which then they can use to log into your applications. In this video, let me show you how this can be easily done in our systems. So this is my service studio. I'm inside a reactive web app that has one entity called customer having these attributes. As usual, I'm going to drag and drop this here in the main flow editor which helps me in creating the usual listing and detail screen. That's how these screens look. So listing and detail. Now these screens, if you see, they are available under main flow also in this, uh, in this, in this place. So the customer listing and details are here. What you also is available in this application now is some of the common elements. For example, the login page, the menu, navigation, and so on and so forth. Now login is here, if you double click on it, you can see that that's how it looks. So I can right away publish my application and log in into the app and access the data for the customer listing in detail. Now there's more to this login page. For example, if you select any of these screens, you can see who can access it, the roles. Anonymous means you will not be prompted for login. Okay, so that's the purpose the login page serves. The person is not yet logged in. So it's wise to make it anonymous. Registered means that this person would be required to log in. So any page that only has registered will be prompted for login. And beyond that, you can also go ahead and create your own roles, which is available under logic. And then you can assign the permissions. There's another video about it, how to access uh, or control the screen access using roles. You can watch it in case you want to know. Now basically what we need to do is create another screen where people can do signups prepare this how about I create a new screen here or even from the login page itself let's just so that you don't get confused let me add a button so it's very uh, common for signups to be available on the page where login is I can put this whole button into a container it just looks so close to the login page I want to add some margin from top okay and then I can call it maybe sign up and I can even move the entire button into center and the text of this button would be sign up now what I want to do is when somebody clicks on this button which is upon the click I want to redirect them to a new screen and I will choose the blank template which is empty let's call it sign up page and create the screen Okay. So, so far when somebody clicks on the sign up button, he will be right to this page that we are calling it sign up. On this page, we are going to uh, provide a form where somebody can register their username, password, email and any other things that you require. Now, Before I go there, I want to show you something on the data side, which is where beyond just this customer table that I created for my own application, there is also a table for system, under system, which is user. Now every application that you build on our systems will have these this at least the user table as a reference added you can also add other tables system tables uh, by using the managed dependency that's a topic for another day so basically in this user entity we have the attributes and this is where we have to use any of these thread operations to create a new user when somebody is registering so to do it in a proper way so first of all on the screen itself let us create a user variable of type user so that's something what platform helps me with and then we can use a form widget here drag and drop on the screen perhaps slightly smaller and then we can drag and drop the user inside okay so our form is there now it has all the attributes that are coming in from uh, the user table so there's a lot more things that I need for example uh, we don't need uh, is active we don't need last login we don't need creation date and time we don't need external and that's it just delete them and what the platform then bring here is the password field so that's a, a security feature that by default didn't bring it but I don't mind putting it here so you should be able to choose their password and I can tie it up with the password field immediately when I select the password field you can see the input type has changed to password so that when the user is typing the password he will not see it I'm gonna put a prompt there 
as the user can see it. I can also put the labels here just to align with the theme. I think username and password together make sense. So I don't mind using it. Now in the next part, when somebody clicks on save, or we can rename it to create uh, create account. This way we're going to write the logic of creating this new customer. So of course the whole validation can go on about. Now in this case, there are a few things which I need to do. So pay attention to this part where you uh, provide the values at least which are mandatory. So name, username, email, all these are mandatory. But the creation date is mandatory, right? So we should make sure to provide it and even the active is mandatory. So to provide that on my screen, what I will do is use assign. And in the assign operator, I can provide data for those two. So creation date would be right now. So platform helps me with suggestion, works fine. And is active, that was another mandatory field to true. Okay, now thereafter, uh, on the screen, there's one specific task that you do is encryption of the password. You can't store password in a, in a, in a visible text in database. So for that, click on manage dependency. Look for users app. Okay, under the users app, you have the first function there. First server action is encrypt password. Use it to encrypt the password. So that's a server action that we have just added and we are want to use it here. By searching for it, encrypt password. The input will be, uh, I mean, automatically the platform is picking up the username and password. That's exactly what you need to do. And then once this is done, it will return the encrypted password in another field. So for that, we can use assignment operator and we'll assign the value of it to our user.password. We'll have now the value of the encrypted password. Okay. Now, with this, in the end, what we need to do is switch to data tab under the user entity and use the function, uh, the CRUD operation for create user. The source will be the user local variable on the screen. And that's it. With that, I think in the end, we can redirect the user to the destination, which is where he can access the login page to login again. Let's check it out. So I'm going ahead with publishing the application. Almost there and we'll launch it now okay so in this case of course I can use sample accounts to log in but if the user wants to sign up he can click on it ah one mistake I didn't make it available for anonymous right so since this is an account that the user will use before creating the account I need to make it anonymous so don't forget that part since I make a change I have to republish so just like what I did is just like the login page, sign up page should also be available to anonymous because the user has not created his account yet. So yeah, that will be an issue. Okay, so since I made a change in the application, let me go ahead and refresh the browser. And then I click on sign up page. I come to my form and we can create an account for, let's say the user Richards, Richards, password could be out systems and email and mobile phone I didn't make them mandatory so I can just go ahead and create the account now with this let's go ahead and log in with our newly created account Richards password as out systems or lowercase let's see if it works login and I'm able to log in now and the account is of Richards thanks for watching